Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Arnie Lukes here at the Crossroads. And uh, our guest for today, Judy Octoloni from Victoria. Welcome, Judy. Hello, Arnie. Thank you. Hello, right. everyone. And Beata Lukes from Adelaide. Welcome, Beata. Hello, everyone. No worries. Now, to just set the stage for today's forum, even though we are using uh, modern technology to produce this, um, this video, um, in fact, this modern technology is constantly encroaching on us and to the point where it can be it can be if it's um, uh, too dominant it can actually overcome rational thinking and we can get a false sense of what's real and I think that that's most important um, we, prior mm -hmm. to this uh, recording we were talking about the blue light effect on um, on us by computers in the evening and how it actually plays with circadia rhythms and that's only one facet there are many many other facets and i know that this is a subject that is um quite dear to judy's heart so judy i'll give you the floor oh, oh thank you arnie well i'm really very concerned and it keeps coming back all the time when you see People on their phones, you know, you go for a ride in the train and everyone's got their phone out. The children at school, they're on their laptops before they go to school, their iPads, they get to school. Many of them are required to use computers during the day. Some of them have to go home and it's, uh, it's more computer work for their homework. It's constant. And then, of course, children, many children now have mobile phones and they cannot resist the lure of Facebook and other distractions. Um, I'm really concerned about the effect it's having on their well-being, mm -hmm. their way of life, and their outlook for the future. Mm -hmm. All they can, you know, take their, if you want to punish a child, take their um, iPad or phone off them. My goodness, it's <laughs> disastrous. It's disastrous. That's, that's no, they're, they're, we're very addicted. Mm, that's a very good st starting point, Judy, and uh, you certainly <laughs> laid a good groundwork to this discussion. Beata, your thoughts, please. Mm. There came a time when we were uh, confiscating all the, all the mobile phones at the mm. family gathering, so mm. the young people had to give them up <laughs> before they entered. <laughs> Otherwise, um, there was no conversation whatsoever. People yes. were here, there, everywhere, talking to somebody else outside of the company mm -hmm. gathered. Mm -hmm. um, it was ridiculous. Mm. So that's what we were doing. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I agree, and that's uh, to me that's a very good uh, that's a very good comment. That um, there's there seems to be an addiction to it. Now, I appreciate that social media can keep people informed as if they're right next door. But the, mm -hmm. the fact is that uh, it actually distracts to a point where um, I've seen young blokes mixing mixing cement for the uh, plaster or the bricklayer and uh, <laughs> in between shovels they've got their phone buzzing in their pocket and they're pulling it out looking at it and it's such a distraction. So, so okay, I've got a mobile phone and I use social media and I use the internet and I use computers to do a lot of things. Mm. But at the same time, I would consider myself a prolific book reader. And I also uh, read the news constantly scanning the news, although I use it 99% of the time on the internet. I scan the newspapers for news. And not um, and so it, to me, electronics is certainly a, a very significant part of my life. So I guess it's it's a matter of okay you've got to place things in perspective, and uh, and take things into account, and you've actually got to relate with this backdrop image we've got behind us. You've got to relate to the real world, and take those things mm -hmm. into account. And the real world is that we've got three people here discussing something, and they're from around Australia, and and we're discussing it almost like mm -hmm. a phone call, but it's a recorded phone call. So so the medium. The medium becomes okay. It's entertainment, but it's also learning. It's a, to me, it's a you've got to put the 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 device into discipline, and it's got to have a specific purpose. Um, anyway, Judy, keep going. That's the word, Arnie. It's self-discipline, isn't it? Uh, we have to manage mm -hmm. manage our screen time, I think, and 
um, yeah, that that's not always easy. It, sometimes it can be just very relaxing to sit down and Google something and uh, and we have a responsibility as parents and grandparents too to mm -hmm. watch the children. Um, the idea of uh, mobile phones being confiscated at mealtimes and, and through the night is a fantastic idea for parents, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, basically the buck stops with us and we have to set an example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I do try and sometimes, you know, you, <laughs> you can be out at a meal somewhere and... and, and Everyone's got their mobile phone out and you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Don and I did it one day. We both said, I forget what we would, we were doing something specific. And I said, look at us. We like a pair of teenagers. We had to put them away. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Your thoughts, yeah. your thoughts, Beata. Speaking of examples, um, not so long ago, there was the plea from a five-year-old, four-year-old, whatever boy. Um, and and he was saying um, that mom does not have time for him mm -hmm. because she's forever on the phone. Mm -hmm. Remember that? That was quite tragic. Mm. It's so true. what is giving in to make room for this technology? Mm. You've got to shake yourself up and, mm. and mm. yeah, and thought... consider the child in it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I agree, Beata, because I've seen that um, firsthand where the, the phones have been put in a basket so that the young people can actually sit across the table and talk to each other. Mm. And, yes. and I do note that um, as policy, if I'm going out, the actual the mobile phone is there, it's in the pocket, but not necessarily switched on because it's um, mm. to me it's a backup that, okay, if the car breaks down, I've got uh, options um, that I need a phone, okay, I can use it. But at the same time, if we're out and about, the phone is still sitting there in the off position because it's, no, we're out and about. We're enjoying dinner and let it go back to the answering yes, service because yes. yes, I'm right. not going to ignore it. It's, not, it's just not going to participate. And so I, I guess that, okay, that's the adult in me talking. But then we come back to the, um, to the point in question and that is screen time with children because to me that's the... Um, to me, that's the area of greatest concern because it's um, it's so easy. I know in um, younger days, it's so easy to put them in front of the TV. It's downtime for the parent. I can actually True. turn off for a minute so the TV becomes the babysitter. Mm -hmm. So there's all these, the pressure on young parents. I won't say young mums, but I will say young parents um, to find downtime when they're just so pressed they're so pressed, they're so pressed, and having children is mm. such a demanding job. So it's not an easy ask we're talking about this um, this screen time with children, but it is absolutely vital. Judy? Yeah, we have to develop strategies and, and for ourselves and the children, um, bearing in mind, of course, that they are on the computer a lot, even during the day at school. Mm -hmm. So when they get home, they I always think their eyes need a rest. Um, <laughs> I know mine do if I've been on the computer too long. And mm -hmm. the, they're not being encouraged. Well, maybe some are, but I don't see a general encouragement with children to just sit and read a book mm -hmm. and enjoy a book mm -hmm. and, and, and being able to go back in that book pick up something you forgot um, the books I used to read as a child were fantastic mm -hmm. a little bit um, you know, I can't think of the word I want it, well they I, were make I, believe to an extent make but believe they, is, yes that's right and that was but a, that, yeah. that's not a bad thing for children because their little minds um, will wander anyway won't they and, and the TV is so destructive to their thinking um tv basically the programs i have now they're training the children how to think speak and act um we have to overcome that i agree with you judy and i just before i give mm. it to beata i just want to place a thought on the table here and that is that when you hold a book in your hands and you read a sentence or a paragraph it places a thought in your mind and the fact is that the thought is to me is an interesting point 
because in that in that thought in that area of imagination you can actually yeah. immerse yourself within it whereas in the whereas in the TV the laptop the computer whatever it's there straight in front of you and there's no opportunity mm. to imagine there's no nothing it's all there as no. a, as a as a pre predetermined this is the consequence of it and there are no nuances mm. there is no you can't see your own face in that person or, or that character from the book you can't place yourself in that in the middle of that it's just there it is in front of you it's almost a pseudo reality becomes a reality whereas in the imagination that's uh, that's your perception Beata. Um, yes, I have picked up a book uh, by Jerry Mander for reasons for eliminating um, television. Yes. And um, of course, he talks about um, how the, the television influences people mm -hmm. and how it changes mm -hmm. their experience mm -hmm. and how it invades the subconscious which was really a mystic idea before and now there is an invader there mm -hmm. so of course every agency on the planet started to use the media to for, for their own benefit for their own agenda starting with governments organization gurus psychologists psychiatrists whoever um, and and the image is placed in such a way that it speaks thousand words. Of mm -hmm. course, mm. Um, he he gives an example of uh, producing producing one mind throughout the nation. Eighty million people watched, um, or two hundred million people <laughs> watched. Um, the funeral of uh, Kennedy, President Kennedy. Oh, yes. And they all got the same experience. Mm. He just noted that because he was working in such a position um, that it gave him an insight because on the one hand, he was an advertiser man, okay? And on the other hand, he was working for organizations that were trying to do good things for the community. Mm -hmm. So he, he, he had this uh, uh, sort of um, split interest going both ways. But the, the observations he made were really so correct. When you isolate people and put them in a closed room with the TV set, you've got no exchange of the feelings that come through. You have no exchange, uh, no, no, no discussion of any kind or comparison with other people. Mm. So everyone in, is receiving the same message at the same time in the same way, and it's planted in forever. Mm. I think that's I think that's a very valid comment, Beata, because I mm. I see a lot of um, I was fortunate I went to film school, big deal. But in that, there was a script writer for children's television who, was, mm -hmm. who spoke about. And that person gave me the straight drum and he said that my scripts are accepted because the role model is such that the parents don't actually know what's going on, but the children do. And the children have to essentially go against the parents' directives in order to resolve the situation and save the day. And so the parents forgive them for going against their directives. And another point is that the outside of that person's comment is that I noted in a lot of sitcoms that the role of the male is one of essentially an insipid or bumbling type of uh, halfway basket case rather than a strong male figure in the family. And it's it's actually mm. the children or the mother or both who are who are the dominant <laughs> figures who are assertive and who know which direction to take the family, or at least to suggest to take the family. And so to me these are these are most profound things because what they're doing is they're reorientating our thinking. Mm. And the and the if mm -hmm. you like the role model of the servant father, even yeah. though he may be 
given headship in the home. The fact is he is a slave to the family and it's, he's a willing slave because of mutual love and cooperation. And yet he's presented as some sort of bumbling halfway fool. Mm. And, uh, and to me, these things are implanting subliminal thoughts, which you referred to, Beata. Anyway, your thoughts, uh, Judy. Oh, well, oh, that's right, Arnie. There's no doubt. Um, I reminded before about the book 1984, which was written many decades ago, but there was a screen on the wall that um, was very influential on the main character. And he knew this. He, it more or less gave him orders, I think. I'll have to go back to that book. And he tried to defeat it. Uh, and it took a lot of effort and to think that even back then there obviously was the thought and plans were afoot to control the population through the screen. Um, it was a big warning to us. I'm not sure we picked up on it too much, but mm -hmm. I recall um, as a child when TV first we all first started getting television sets in our home. That TV set took over the evenings. Uh -huh. It was such a novelty. Uh -huh. Well, the TV was on, so we could all sit and watch it for a while. And and so we trained ourselves, I think, that this was our future, sitting in front yes. of the TV. And yes, we are to the government can use it massively to influence our thinking, influence what we're doing. Um, I guess they've done that over the radio for a while. I remember hearing that many years ago the ABC was used by the government to advise um, uh, and the serial Blue Hills. Mm -hmm. And it was used as an advisory thing for farmers um, and things that were current mm -hmm. for them to know. Uh, it came over on Blue Hills. And as a, mm -hmm. I used to listen, I remember it well. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's constant. It's not new. It's it's constant, and mm. it's a it's a big weapon for them to have. Mm. And we got a bit. We have to stand against it a bit, mm. a lot. I think that's I think mm. that's an interesting because we're coming full circle on this subject. I'm looking at the time. Mm. We're coming full circle, and what we what's really being stated here is that the um, is that the screen time is such not only an effect of how children think how adults think but it's also a programming tool for propaganda and uh, and it can be used so destructively or constructively at least with the book mm -hmm. it's one person at a time and it's their thought mm -hmm. and they place it in their imagination and the good part right. about about a book is that if you discuss it with someone else they may have had a similar thought or even a completely different thought on that exact same uh, paragraph and, and to me, that's the beauty of it, um, and, and in that you can discuss things, you can engage, and it's this communication that actually assists, whereas with the, um, with the uh, electronic media, um, these tools of communication are actually, even though they're, we're talking a lot more, they're actually of such poor quality that there really yeah. is no, no thinking in it. Beata, your thoughts? Yes. Um... I, I suppose we will continue next week. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say is that the child need to be considered in all of this, first of all, because they growing up too quickly. They skipping the childhood altogether. Mm, yes. Um, most children are just put in care and um, it's really tragic um, yes. that they are skipping the time where they should develop their crea creativity, their mm -hmm. thinking, their experience with the outside world. Mm -hmm. There is no time for that. <laughs> Everyone is hiring them yes. to grow till, till they five and off to school and somebody else is taking care of them, mm -hmm. which is, accidentally the screen those days mm. so 1984 welcome mm. yes george orwell's book 1984 of course was to warn the world and it was written before 1948 
but he changed the title from 1948 to 1984 because he felt that the world was not ready to listen to him. And <laughs> here we are, here we are, 48 to 84 is 40, 50, and now 70 years afterwards. And uh, and is the world listening? Well, I think it is. Closing mm-hmm. comments, Judy. Yeah, I think you're right, Arnie. We're getting, uh, we're all getting aware of screen time and and the downside of it and and there's warnings in magazines warnings everywhere now that uh, that we have to pay attention to what's happening and Beata's quite right children are so precious when they're small let's um let's keep them as children while we can Mm. groom them as best as we can that's right let us groom them Mm. rather than screen time that's right closing comments Beata please um, the technologies are also very detrimental to health. Mm-hmm. It, it influences the brain in ways that we can't even imagine yeah. and um, influences the gut mm-hmm. in ways that we can't even imagine. And if they up the technologies for from 4G to 5G as, yeah. as the progress um, uh, the following up um, is 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 taking us. Um, this is really a bleak future. Mm. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, mm. it was yeah that's right. And, going uh, to happen. You've you've touched on other subjects that are that are very pertinent to the home, and that is five G and the health of the gut, and mm. our relationship with the outside world, with the real world, and not the uh, perceived world in the computer screen that's and that's right. uh, that's an excellent summary for today thank you ladies for mm. uh, joining me in today's forum i look forward to uh, the next time we catch up this is uh, arnie lukes at the crossroads good afternoon ladies and gentlemen